Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. Oh my freaking gosh, I cannot believe I'm at Nickelodeon Studios. Hello and welcome to Theme Park History, the channel for everything to do with theme parks. Old and new, big and small. In today's episode, we relive our childhoods by taking a look at Universal Studios Florida's Nickelodeon Studios, a television taping studio and family attraction that opened with the park on June 7, 1990 and closed on April 30, 2005. This attraction was suggested by all these people who I assume were fans of Nickelodeon growing up in the 90s, so thank you to everyone for your comments. As always, if there's an attraction you would like us to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. You never know, your suggestion might be next month's video. Home to such beloved shows as Family Double Dare, Clarissa Explains It All, Nickelodeon Arcade, Legends of the Hidden Temple, Nickelodeon Guts, all that, figure it out, Keenan and Kel, and Slime Time Live. Nickelodeon Studios was the must-visit attraction for any kid who was growing up in the 1990s. For almost 15 years, guests were able to get a behind-the-scenes look at how shows for the station that was changing the nation were made, and for some lucky few, being slimed as well. In order to dive into how Nickelodeon Studios became the world's first headquarters for kids, we'll need to take a look at the history of the first cable channel for children. On December 1st, 1977, Cube, the first two-way interactive cable system, was launched in Columbus, Ohio. The system would go on to have a major impact in the development of future TV technology, including pay-per-view programs and other interactive services. Another feature were community channels that were offered free of charge to subscribers. One of these channels was C3, which exclusively showed only one program on the channel, a children's show called Pinwheel. Pinwheel, which is similar to the most notable children's show Sesame Street, was aimed at preschoolers and featured a mix of live-action skits featuring actors and puppets, along with animated shorts. The channel would become so popular it would be eventually renamed to match its flagship show. The channel would relaunch as Nickelodeon on April 1st, 1979, and be distributed to cable providers via satellite on RCA Satcom 1. The channel would still feature shows aimed at younger children, but would introduce their first show aimed at teenagers in 1981, with You Can't Do That on Television. The show would feature teenage actors in a sketch comedy format, similar to Saturday Night Live, with each episode having a theme that related to pop culture of the time. The green slime that was on the show would go on to be adopted by Nickelodeon as a trademark in many of its future shows. Due to a lack of successful shows, the channel would struggle after its relaunch, operating at a loss of $10 million by 1984, and ranking last among all cable channels. Bob Pittman, the president of the network at the time, would bring in Fred Siebert and Alan Goodman, the duo who created MTV's iconic bumpers a few years earlier to rejuvenate the struggling channel. For those who don't know what a bumper is, it's a brief announcement, usually 2 to 15 seconds in length, that contain a voiceover, placed between a pause in the program and its commercial break. The two would go on to hire the help of animators, writers, producers, and the doo-wop group The Jive 5 to create the now iconic channel bumpers. The two would also help create a new logo that would be used in different variations for over the next 25 years. Within six months of its rebranding, Nickelodeon would become the dominant channel in children's programming thanks to new original shows like Double Dare and Mr. Wizard's World, and a renewed focus on reaching a broader demographic outside of just preschoolers. The growth of the first Kids Network and the demand for more original shows would eventually lead Nickelodeon in joining Universal Studios Florida to create their first production studio, aptly named Nickelodeon Studios. Construction began in November of 1988 with completion of the studios in June of the following year. The 90,000 square foot facility would be made up of sound stages 18 and 19, with a central building between the two that housed production offices, dressing rooms, makeup rooms, the GAC kitchen, and the Game Lab live show, which was located on stage 17 for guests of Universal Studios Florida to visit. During construction, the adults involved in the construction would crawl on their knees in an attempt to envision what younger children would see as they walked around the studios. Nickelodeon Studios would officially open with Universal Studios Florida on June 7, 1990. To celebrate the grand opening, Nickelodeon had a live three-hour special hosted by Double Dare host Mark Summers, 
along with other stars of other Nickelodeon shows at the time. On October 27, 1990, Nickelodeon Studios would officially open one of its most iconic features, the Slime Geyser. The geyser, which was located just outside the studios, would spew the slime upwards every 15 minutes. In its early days, it would shoot forcefully enough to get those standing too close slimed, though the pressure would be reduced in later years. Another iconic feature was the Nickelodeon Studios Time Capsule. On April 30th, 1992, a time capsule containing items that were considered important to kids at the time was buried in front of the studio. Some of the items included in the capsule were a brand new Game Boy, a Home Alone VHS tape, Reebok pump sneakers, a jar of Gak, and a box of Twinkies. The capsule, which is stated to open on April 30th, 2042, was moved to the Nick Hotel after the studios closed. It was then again moved to the Nickelodeon Animation Studio in Burbank, California, after the hotel's closure in 2016. You can go to Nickelodeon Studios! Quite just sit there when you can go to Nickelodeon Studios. Buds and sits are getting packed. Mom is making up a great big snack. Singing Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. How do we get there? I don't know. It's right on the map. Come on, let's go. Nickelodeon. Florida. You can go there. Besides being the first production studio at the park, Nickelodeon Studios would also offer its own attraction at Universal Studios Florida. Located in the production central area of the park, guests would take a walking tour of the production studio. The 40 minute long tour would give guests an inside look on how Nickelodeon shows were made. Guests would enter the building, which stood out when compared to other structures in the park due to its unique paint job of bright colors and massive Nickelodeon sign on top of the building. The tour would take guests into two viewing tubes overlooking the sound stages, where guests could watch productions being filmed below. The tour then continues into the production offices that sit between the sound stages, where guests could see the star's dressing rooms along with the wardrobe and makeup departments. The tour would continue into the Gak Kitchen, where guests were shown how iconic Nickelodeon Gak was made and even given the chance to taste it. The tour concluded with a trip to the Game Lab, which to many was the highlight of the entire tour. The premise of the Game Lab was guests were testing new game show ideas for possible future Nickelodeon shows. Kids from the crowd were selected to participate, and one would even get slimed to finish the tour. A Nickelodeon-themed gift shop was located outside of the building, along with miscellaneous photo opportunities that rotated over the studio's history. The tour was a massive success with guests of all ages, with an estimated 4 million guests coming to visit Nickelodeon Studios during the park's first year of operation. Even though the channel was popular in the early 1990s when Nickelodeon Studios opened, Nickelodeon would still continue to grow in popularity throughout the decade with the addition of its animated television division Nicktoons, which featured such shows as Doug, Rugrats, Ren and Stimpy, and Rocco's Modern Life along with its programming block aimed specifically towards preteens and teenagers, called SNCC, which featured such shows as Are You Afraid of the Dark, Clarissa Explains It All, All That, and Keenan and Kel. In fact, Nickelodeon's popularity would eventually lead them into creating a brand new attraction for Universal Studios Florida, and a future addition to theme park history, Jimmy Neutron's Nicktoon Blast, which would open in May of 2003. By 1999, Universal Studios Florida was amidst the middle of a transition. As we have previously mentioned in our Revenge of the Mummy video, Universal was in the middle of a project where many of the original opening day attractions were being replaced with whatever was popular at the movies at the time. Another change for the park was a renewed focus on being a destination theme park rather than a working film and television studio. By 1999, there were no new shows being filmed at Nickelodeon Studios due to the opening of the company's two brand new studios in California the year before. By 2001, Nickelodeon Studios was down to just a double digit number of employees and had begun to see a steady decline in visitors as Nickelodeon's live action productions began to transition from game and stunt shows with audience participation to more traditional sitcoms, many of which required close set productions that were now being filmed in Hollywood, California. Nickelodeon Studios faced some financial issues at the time, 
So many props were sold off, and the studio tour was shortened from 40 minutes long to only 15. Skipping the entire studio portion of the tour, and heading straight into the GAC kitchen and game lab. The final show ever filmed at Nickelodeon Studios was Nickelodeon Splat on August 17, 2004. The shortened tour would continue the run until the studio officially closed on April 30, 2005. Over the next few months, all signs and logos of Nickelodeon were removed, including the famous Slime Geyser and Time Capsule. On November 9, 2006, Universal announced that Soundstage 18 would be redesigned to become a permanent 1,000-seat theater for the Blue Man Group. The facility would be renamed the Sharp Aquos Theater and officially open on June 1, 2007. While much of Nickelodeon Studios was removed during its closure and the construction of the new Blue Man Group Theater, it was discovered in 2012 by YouTube personality Adam the Woo that some of the murals and decor in Soundstage 19 and the upper floors of the main building had remained untouched from its closure seven years earlier. As of 2018, very little trace of the studio actually remained. All but one of the murals in the building on the first and second floor have been removed, and the only remaining signs of the former studio is the bathrooms underneath the staircase, where the original green slime themed flooring pattern remains. For almost 15 years, Nickelodeon Studios was the only place for kids of all ages to get slimed, gacked, and double dared. For many kids, including myself, Nickelodeon was a major part of our childhood and was an essential part of pop culture in the 1990s. Nickelodeon Studios allowed kids to see how their favorite shows were made, create some slime and gack, and even be part of the game shows we all watched and wanted to compete in, hoping we can win that grand prize to space camp. While Nickelodeon Studios might be no more, there's no denying the impact the First World Headquarters for Kids had on anyone who had the chance to visit. So that is the theme park history of Nickelodeon Studios. As always, thank you for watching the video and supporting the channel. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if there's any attraction you want us to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. Once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, you did it! You win everything! The boombox, the moon shoes, the trip to space camp! That's all the time we have today! See you next time! Theme Park History was recorded in front of a live audience in Nickelodeon Studios at Universal Studios, Florida.